So COVID has affected our lives in many horrible ways. Good evening. The coronavirus. COVID-19. COVID-19. COVID. COVID cases. The E3 video game expo in California is just one of the many trade fairs which have been cancelled this summer because of the virus. And I would argue that's a positive thing. And let me explain why. And before I jump in, I just want to lay the groundwork and saying I do not think COVID in any way is a positive thing. The point is what it has done to conferences. And I'm not just talking about E3 Neva, any online conference really, such as it being a Apple conference, Samsung conference, Sony, Nintendo, even a Google Stadia. <laughs> All conferences in general suffer for one major thing, the live. And with a conference being live, you suffer from three major things. One, they are prone to technical problems. <laughs> Two, people get nervous when they go on a stage. Uh, if you guys didn't know, Need for Speed Payback, I'm... Um... <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. And number three, they can be really cringe. I wish this could have all started when we all had a Commodore 64. Everyone do it with me. I said everyone come on. Now for some people, you may enjoy it. It's, it's car crash TV. You want to see and watch it unfold. But I don't know if many people are the same as me, but I cannot... Uh, consume cringe without feeling terrible. This is why I cannot get on with the UK office, but I can get on with the American office. And I also think it does the games themselves a disservice by comparing them with how loud people are in the auditorium. Now take for instance, you get an established um, long lasting IP such as Call of Duty. The second you mention that name, you're gonna get people cheering. So that's what's happened. So that's what happens when you then combine that with an obscure IP or something like Peggle 2, which I will argue is one of the best games ever made. You get this. Thanks, guys. That was, that was amazing. Thanks so much. I'd say I was speechless, but I have one more thing to announce coming this year. Peggle 2. Now, if you are a person that's living under a rock or new to gaming or someone's just announced an IP that you're unaware of, you are going to kind of compare them with what you're hearing on the stage at the moment. So if people are shouting and screaming for one game and it's crickets for another, you're going to pretty much at the back of your mind go, Oof, might avoid that one. And that's not fair. And also, it's not just a case of the way we feel about games. I think devs themselves are becoming very aware that if you have a game and you want to announce it to the world, by waiting and giving it to E3, all you're doing is putting it into a very oversaturated trailer fest and people are gonna forget about it. Now for me, there's been many times that I've sitting down, watched the conference, and at the start I've got, oh, I like this game, I love this game. And then by the end of the conference, I'm talking about the tail end of the games. And then somebody will mention a particular game was like, what about this? And I'm like, which one was that? And then I'll Google it, YouTube it, watch the trailer. I'm like, I completely forgot about that. And that's the trouble we're getting hit with so many games. And don't get me wrong, as a gamer, it's quite excited to have this amount of content coming at you. But as a dev that spent years on a game and they need you to buy it, go into somewhere where everybody at the same time is all showing their new shiny things. It's not the best way to showcase your content. And this is why I think over the years we've noticed more and more leaks happening within the week or two before the E3 conference. Now, maybe the, there is a grip, he's working on the lights or something in the conference area and he's seen that there's a new Forza game and he's the one announcing it on Twitter. Or maybe the devs are just going, we're gonna be up against some heavy hitters. There's gonna be hundreds of games. We've already signed off and gave the trailer to uh, Ubisoft and they're going to be showcasing it. So we could also just send these little files over to IGN or it leaks out on the internet. And then we're going to get some press looking at us and only us because this is before E3. This is why everyone's starving for news. That's the time to drop your trailer. 
So I think with every passing year, the leaks are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because devs know it's a secret recipe to get some uh, clicks straight away. So it looks like E3 this year is going to be cancelled once again. So there's not actually going to be a physical audience that's going to turn up to see this and it's going to be live streamed on the internet. If at all, we haven't had that confirmed or not. But my entire point of this video is I want everything pre-recorded and then streamed to us. Mainly because when something's live, things can go wrong as we've seen. But you can't make it over complex neither because with it being live, you've got to be able to do it on the night. And the more comple complexity, complexity, complex, complex, I can't do it, Com complex, more stuff that you add to it, yeah? It makes it more complicated. So if you pre-record it, you can do it and do it and do it until you nail it. And this is why I feel like the pre-recorded shows have been amazing lately. Now, this is where I'd like to sprinkle in a video footage of Apple's conferences. Granted, we're talking about E3, but it still stands. Apple conferences, now they've gone to pre-recorded, instead of standing on a stage and giving you boring information, having drone shots and all that lot, have made the conferences so much better. I would love to show you some of that footage, but Apple is ever so funny when it comes down to me using their uh, videos. I've even been kicked off live streams by streaming it as it's happening. So anyway, just take my word, Apple conferences are now top tier thanks to everything being pre-recorded. But one of the big things I would like to see is pretty much the death of E3, which I think is coming. Um, and instead of us having this showcase of everything, I want to break it down into smaller parts and I want to have a publisher do their little conference. So I want to see Ubisoft do one. I want to see EAs do one. I want to see Sony do theirs. And that way, the smaller conferences, so it's not so oversaturated. But the one thing I want to point my fingers at is a publisher house. <laughs> I go to butcher the name. I can never say it. Anapanura, Anapanora. I don't know how to say it. Anyway, these guys. They did one of the best conferences I've ever seen. And the reason be it is they've got several games they wanted to showcase. So they got each dev to make a video. And with doing so, their personality came across. So each individual video was different. And in doing so, it made me get a feel for the game because it came out through the publisher's passion, developer's passion even. And that would have never happened if they was forced a microphone into their hand and told to go on stage. So yeah, I think I've pretty much said my entire argument towards why I think live shows suck. I think pre-recorded is better. And I also think we need to dismantle this entire thing of putting them all in one showcase once a year and actually do several smaller showcase spread throughout the entire year. Now, just to save me having to reply in the comments, a few of you may have noticed my uh, little bump on the top of my head. I did have a fight with one of these cabinets yesterday. Like, comment and subscribe.